everyone, welcome back to Recruitment in the Spotlight. Ritz, if you've been here before, we're here with the famous San Diego Fire Rescue. <laughs> oh man, I'll get to introductions of them in just a moment. Uh, first, I just want you to know, my name is Lasana Pakeman. I do recruitment with CalJack. I get to do recruitment with CalJack. So incredibly blessed to be here. Um, I'll be your host for today. And so I'll be guiding you through this interview, helping you to ask questions, the burning questions we know that you have about the fire service and what it takes to become a firefighter at San Diego Fire Rescue. So my pronouns are she, her, and hers, and I'm very excited to jump right in. So we have questions uh, that we will be asking. We want you to put your questions in the comment box. We'll have moderators answering as many questions as possible, and we'll even try to get to some of those live. So please stay tuned. Here we are. <laughs> Here we are, and welcome everybody. Hello. <laughs> All right, so we have uh, Chief Logan here first. Would you like to introduce yourself and we can just go on down the line? Sure, my name is Robert Logan. I'm Deputy Fire Chief. I've been with the San Diego Fire Rescue Department for 23 years. 23 years, okay. I'm Jason Shanley. First of all, hello, Lasana. Hello. We have known each other for a long time, <laughs> and it is about time. So we're happy to be hello. here. I'm a fire captain. I'm also uh, serve as San Diego City's first recruitment officer, and I've been on the job as long as my boss, 23 years. Okay. Happy to be here. Happy and it's good to see you live. <laughs> good to see you too. Hello. Thanks for having us. My name is Chad Arberg. I'm a firefighter, and I've been on the department for seven years. Okay, welcome. Thank you. So, uh, firefighter Linda Morales, I've been on the department less than two years. I uh, just recently got off probation in June and as a part of the 91st Academy. So, 91, yes. second to none. Hey, <laughs> hey, 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 say less. So, you're the most recent hire with yes, the department. I'm, I'm junior too. All He's amazing. Right. Well, congratulations yeah. for getting Thank off you. probation. Appreciate it. You are very welcome. Very, very welcome. So, the audience has questions for you. We want to know why the fire service, mm. maybe talk a little bit about your pathway into the fire service and something that you wish you knew before getting in. Mm. So I know each of you guys, we went over this, I've heard your stories, I can't wait for the audience to hear them. Um, who would like to start? Captain Shanley, would you like to kick right. it off? Sure. Uh, in 1991, I had a good friend of mine, a retired fire captain, uh, Fletcher Webb, that was on the fire department and he was always happy, he had a nice vehicle. Uh, and he was uh, excited to go to work regularly, and that was something I wasn't used to seeing. Yeah, I was used to hearing people say, I have to go to work tomorrow, and he would say, I get to go to work, and I'd never heard that before. Mm -hmm. And so in 91, I took the test for the first time to get on the fire department, and I did not pass. I was unsuccessful. I had no idea what to do. I was introduced to Brothers United. I got connected with some folks there, uh, and then uh, time passed, and roughly about 97, 98, as a barber, you, yeah, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, I still have my license too, so don't hate. Uh, but uh, I was a barber and I had a couple of folks um, from the San Diego Fire Rescue Department that were clients of mine. Um, Chief Clay started a uh, EMT class at Brothers United and told, us, told me about it and I was off to the races. And that was right around 97, 98. And then in 2000, got into the fire academy. So that's uh, a, the short version of how I ended up here. And best thing to ever happen, besides getting married, honey, <laughs> trust me, best thing to ever happen uh, to me. And having my kids, my two daughters. <laughs> so, yeah, it's right up there. How about that? It's right up there with the best thing. Yes. Yes. And I'll pass it on to uh, Firefighter Arbor. Okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. So I had lots of lots of jobs before getting finding my way to the fire service. I went to college in Reno, got a degree in animal science, went back and took care of a, a beef cattle farm that's been in my family for, for years. Okay. And then I moved out to San Diego <laughs> in 01, became a pharmaceutical scientist. Oh, wow. uh, so lots of stuff all over the oh, chart that doesn't, that doesn't, that yeah. doesn't sound like it's fire service stuff, but it all was able to get kind of encapsulated into this job, yeah. which what I wish I knew, I wish I knew how great this job was earlier on so I didn't have to do all that beef cattle stuff. <laughs> we want all the farmers, we want all of you to, to think works. about the fire service. It, it, all, it, all, it all applies. Oh man, that's so good. And, and how about you? Um, yeah, Firefighter Morales. For me, I've always been an athlete growing up. Um, I'm from Fallbrook originally. I was a three-sport athlete growing up, volleyball, basketball, track and field. I'm half Puerto Rican, half Salvadorian, and I was fortunate enough to be the first person in my family to go uh, to college on a full-ride volleyball scholarship. 
So I went to Cal State Northridge, go Matadors. Hey, hey. Uh, I graduated in 2011 and was fortunate enough to start playing volleyball professionally. Did that for almost eight years. I uh, played in Brazil, Turkey, Philippines, all over the world. Was fortunate enough to go to the Olympics in 2016. I knew I couldn't play volleyball forever though. So I was looking at alternate career paths. Uh, and I was fortunate enough, one of my trainers at the time from Dynamic Fitness, he reached out and he was like, hey, I have a contact of a female, an American Ninja Warrior, actually. Her name is Selena Laniel. She's on our department. Can you, can you just say that again? What's her name? What does she do? She, her name's Selena Laniel, and she is an American Ninja Warrior. Uh, amazing. Yeah, yes. she is phenomenal. Yes. I happen to have met this woman. She yes. is absolutely she is. amazing. She's about to be a captain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So she reached out to you and told you about... I reached out to her oh, and told okay. her I was interested in becoming a firefighter, and she said, come on down. She was at Station 14 in North Park, so I had the privilege of going on a ride-along, and I stayed there all day from from 7 a.m. until almost midnight, uh, eating with the crew, code nining, cooking, running calls, and that really gave me the insight of how amazing this job is. Not only being a professional athlete and still continuing to you know, be a part of a crew and have that second family, but also the impact that we have you know, serving um, our community, and that's something that is just so rewarding, and to have the ability, that privilege to give back continually, mm -hmm. whether people realize it or not, it is so incredibly rewarding. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, yeah, I was hooked. After that day, I was like, <laughs> I want to I wanna apply, I want to be a part of San Diego, and that was it. And here you are. And here I am, yeah. <laughs> All right, and so Chief Logan, how about you? What was your path into the fire service, and maybe something you wish you knew before getting in? Sure, my path was a little different. Okay. I grew up in the inner city of Southeast San Diego in an area called Lincoln Park. I grew up about four houses from a fire station. And at the time, that area is known for being a challenging area. Mm. So at the time, the fire station San was San Diego the, has challenging areas? Well, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, don't, don't tell they're, them about they're, they're limited, but they are there. Um, and like I said, I grew up four houses from the fire station. And they used to go on calls, and I was the kid that would run to the window and see mm. the fire engine go by. But I never knew that that could be me mm -hmm. because I didn't see anybody look like me. Mm -hmm. um, long story short, as I got old enough, I went to the fire station and asked how I could become a firefighter. And I was given some, some bad information to no fault of theirs. Um, long story short, um, and this is why diversity in all workforces is extremely important. Um, once I met some people who I can identify with, who look like me and can identify with me, um, they gave me great information and the rest is history, and now I'm a, a deputy fire chief for San Diego Fire Department. Mm. Yeah. And my boss. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you can see what are the requirements of being in recruitment. You gotta can be we, bald. Can we just give it up for you yeah, guys? I feel like you're all it's randomly weird. clapping anyway. Can we just? I'm so happy to have yeah. you guys here yeah. today. And the energy <clears throat> in the studio, you guys yeah. just have really brought it to, to a new level. This well, is the consequences that you told us if we didn't bring the energy. <laughs> this way, trust me. When Masada says do up, we do it. Yeah. <laughs> said that I don't know but you already <laughs> had it <laughs> all right so we do want to talk about specialties so each of you have had such a, um, a colorful background before even coming into the fire service and just kind of letting folks know if this isn't the first thing that you thought about if you've lived another life or had another job or something like that this is st still something that you can pursue which is amazing once they're at the San Diego Fire Department um, San Diego Fire Rescue um, what are some of the specialties what are what are areas that they can go into and I know that you here firefighter Arberg you wear many hats yeah. can you tell us about one of the the hats that you wear as a canine search yeah. specialist I didn't even mention all my other jobs <laughs> I only had so much time, but another one of my careers before getting on the fire service was a professional dog trainer. Okay. And I didn't realize it when I was getting hired on that there was a, a position called canine search specialist within our USAR team, which is our urban search and rescue team. So mm -hmm. the California Task Force 8 is our USAR team that's specific to San Diego. They're all over the country. Mm -hmm. And I get the pleasure of having this little dog, Corey, that I get to go, go around and do demonstrations and searches and training. And if there's any natural disasters, he's trained to go and find uh, people that are still alive to where we could really effectively search an area and use our, uh, our firefighter personnel and equipment as efficiently as we can to get to have some positive outcomes from mm -hmm. major disasters. As a matter okay. of fact, the, the disaster that happened back in Miami several years several years back with uh -huh. the building collapse. Oh. It, it was a, it was a task force dog that had the found found that one kid. Wow. Mm. Wow. 
Okay. I know that we have a clip of Corey. We have a, a couple oh, clips good. of him. We, we'd love for you all to meet him. We wanted him to be here in studio today. He's <laughs> a tough um, flight. <laughs> he doesn't like, he he doesn't like flight, space. flight cancellation. Don't work well for you. Let's go ahead and cut to Corey. Corey, uh, we, we want the audience to see who you are. You get the reward from you. He's got a grin, doesn't he? Oh. <laughs> Everybody loves Corey. Oh, wow. yeah. oh, he makes the dogs at the dog park look like. Oh, I, I, he's, he's a pro. A, he's our newest recruiter. Oh. Most so effective, he's too. Most effective, yeah. <laughs> what's, what's his backstory? How did he get his name? His name's Corey. So he was named after a firefighter that passed away several years back, actually, of a local firefighter from Escondido, which is a neighboring city. Okay. Uh, so we. Uh, in honor of Corey Iverson, he, yeah. we named Corey after him. Okay, okay. So Corey has a story. He's also yeah, a absolutely. hero. And Corey, he Corey come, came from a couple shelters. He was surrendered multiple times. Just shows the, the neat, mm -hmm. the neat purposing of dogs that come with this high intensity and high energy to where he came back. And he, he's a hero. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Corey, Takes a hero Corey's though phenomenal. to like help manage him and train him <laughs> and all of that, right? Yeah, he's oh, yeah. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Firefighter Arberg is an amazing dog handler. He's been an incredible asset to our recruitment efforts. Um, he can draw a crowd. The things that the dog can do, he has su like master. He's a master of dogs. He said he was a dog trainer. His dog does every single thing that he's supposed to do, um, and uh, you can tell that he really enjoys being around them. The students really love him. I mean, it's been it's been amazing. It, it takes a lot of pressure off me having to perform like normal. I don't have to put my clown nose on and anything like I used to. We just let Corey uh, do what he does. Aww, he's amazing. Well, Chief Arberg, I, I believe you're very very humble. We have some more clips. Of of, of Corey here, <laughs> out in the community. Yeah, 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 that little Balboa. Yeah. Aww, amazing, amazing. Uh, so this is one specialty that you can go into. Are there any other specialties or areas of focus that folks can go into at San Diego Fire Rescue? Sure, San Diego Fire Rescue, I, I like to call it the, the most exciting fire department. <laughs> yeah. uh, because we have so much going, in, going on within our department that other departments don't have. Uh, for example, you can be in our hazmat team and go on hazmat responses throughout the county, we're the county response team. You can be, become a star medic and be on a SWAT team with PD as they make their um, law enforcement entries. Um, you can be a helicopter medic um, and fly on our helicopter and go out to rescues. You can be a crew chief, you can be the captain in charge of the helicopter. Mm. Um, and all those positions are staffed by firefighters. So they start as probationary firefighters and as they progress through the ranks, they acquire certain specialties and special trainings that allow them to do that. And there's a whole host of other things like our technical rescue team, our USAR team, which Chad was talking about, our uh, mass team, which is our arson investigator team, which they actually go out with PD and they investigate fires. And they also have a dog that everybody loves. <laughs> um, we have a whole host of things uh, which give you ample opportunities well above other departments. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for a place to where you can do any of those things you just mentioned, San Diego Fire San Diego Rescue Fire is where you need to be, right? You can do whatever your fancy is. Uh, we have an opportunity, for the most part, we have an opportunity with our fire department. It's, it's incredible. That's one of the advantages of being a part of a larger department mm -hmm. is that there's so much opportunity. I mean, we also fix our own holes. Mm -hmm. We repair our own holes. Our allied equipment generators and all those kinds, we, we fix those. Um, there, just a, a ton of things that we do. We, we service our own ladders. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you, so there's just a, there's a bunch of things that you can do in our department. Um, if you have a knack for a particular something, uh, there's a good chance that you can get on to one of those specialties. So it's one of, one of the great things, one of the many okay. great things about our department. And are your ladders wooden or metal? Just I, I'm just wondering. Uh, aluminum. Aluminum. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. There we go. Now. Now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. And so next question is, um, how does your department help employees reach their goals to enrich their careers, maybe promotions or, you know, so you've, you say that a candidate has now gotten on to San Diego Fire Rescue, you, 
How, how does San Diego assist in helping her get through her career or any firefighter at San mm -hmm. Diego? So the first step once you graduate the academy is to get off probation. <laughs> so we send you through a, a yeah. post-academy training. Okay. We don't just send you out on the ranks and hey, you're on your own. We send you through a post-academy training, which is a very structured training program. Mm -hmm. First of all, to make you the best firefighter you can be because safety is paramount and helping out the citizens of San Diego is, is, is number one on, mm -hmm. our, on our agenda. Once you complete that, there's promotion opportunities. The next step from firefighter is paramedic or engineer. So we have our own paramedic school, our own paramedic school. So you can come in as an EMT and go off to paramedic school and get paid full time to go to paramedic school to better yourself, mm -hmm. graduate from paramedic school and get a substantial raise. Other routes you can take is, yes. Do you, can you repeat that? <laughs> <laughs> what, did you so, what did you say? Substantial raise. No one cares about the other part. Oh, yeah. no, you can come in as an EMT, go to school to become a paramedic. Can you? Correct. And it's yeah. our school. And you get paid. We'll pay for yeah. you to go. Yes. Okay. It's our school. We're the only fire department within our county that has a, a paramedic school that is hosted by us, taught by our professionals, and you go on our time. You're fully paid and supported. You don't have to go back to the fire station after class. You go home, you study. We just want you to pass. Once you pass, you get a substantial raise, and now you're a firefighter paramedic. Mm -hmm. And that's just one aspect of promotion. The next aspect is our engineer program. Okay. So we have um, Chief Melendez has done an incredible job, Absolutely. and Jim Lang mm -hmm. has done an incredible Absolutely. job at developing a, um, we call it the Engineers Candidate Certification, ECC. Okay. It's a tough one to, <laughs> to, to get out there. but. You go and they'll actually train you and provide you with all the material you need to become a fire engineer. And to become a fire engineer, you actually drive the fire truck. So that's a substantial promotion with some substantial responsibilities mm. Mm. Um, that can help you propel to other promotions as far as captain and, and propel to the ranks that way. Okay. All right. Well, that's incredible. I mean, it sounds like there's so many opportunities to um, to get involved and to have a, a specialty and also to um, increase your own education and your own knowledge once you're in the job. You know, you're not just limit. That's not the ceiling right. for you. Yeah. And, and that's an excellent point. Say you don't want to do any of that. You just want to educate yourself. We do have an educational incentive and we do have tuition reimbursement. Mm. So you can go to school and you'll get reimbursed up to a certain amount per year. I believe it's $2,500 per fiscal year. Mm -hmm. um, and that just continues and never ends. So you can go to school for the next 30 years if that's your mm -hmm. sole desire. Mm -hmm. And actually graduate out of the fire department, and become <laughs> a doctor or whatever you may want to be. Lots of opportunities. So I think I'm gonna, that's what I think my next thing, <laughs> become a doctor. But, and, that, and that's not it. it. Those are some of the internal things that we have also. But we also right. have, uh, we do have uh, the chief officer series if folks want to take that mm -hmm. series to, to go through the learn about incident command. Um, part of the um, career development is also getting on hazmat. Our department will pay for folks to get on to hazmat. There's also personal mentoring. There's uh, special projects. Mm. There's tons of special projects so you can learn leadership experience. We have the um, post academy trainers that so you can go to that. You can go to one of those fire stations and become one of the folks that helps to train the brand new firefighters. There's tons of different ways. Again, this is one of the benefits of being a part of a larger department is there are so many different avenues that if you want something, either we provide it or many times uh, our department will allow you to start something that other people can become a part of too. So that's one, one of the good things. If you want it, for the most part, uh, we got it or can get it. It sounds like it's already here. Yeah, it sounds something. like it's already it here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It already exists. Uh, so at this time, we're gonna we're going to check the the question box and sure. see if we have All any right. questions. Uh, we do have a team member on site. Courtney, would you like to tell us if there's any questions in the question box? Courtney. Absolutely. And I just want to give a quick shout out. I think one of your team members is also in the question box, helping us answer some questions. So uh, thank you very much for that as well. Um, so one of our first questions is, can you explain a little about your lifeguard program? Uh, someone saw it on your Instagram and would love to know a little bit more about it. Yeah, so um, I don't know a ton about lifeguards. The lifeguards are a part of our organization under the umbrella, but they have their own chief, mm -hmm. they have their own program, their own academies. Incredible, incredible opportunities every single year mm -hmm. to um, that they do to reach out to the community for their junior lifeguard programs. Um, they do a lot of things in in the community. So what I would recommend is that folks go. There, I believe there's a link on our join SDFD mm -hmm. um, org website. There's a link to the lifeguards, and I would recommend that they reach out 
to the lifeguards to ask any specific questions because they do so much it's hard to just keep that stuff at the top of my head mm -hmm. as big as it is I, trust me it's not there <laughs> but they do a lot our, our lifeguards are incredible one of the things that's really neat about them is that we actually do work together a lot of times and again one of the great things about having the fire department that we have you can either work downtown or you can work by the beach or you, you know what I mean so we have a few beach stations mm -hmm. and so along with those we have cliffs and so we work with our lifeguards if somebody unfortunately falls at the cliff or somebody unfortunately experiences a drowning or some other type of trauma in the water uh, we work alongside uh, the lifeguards to do that they also host our fire boat um, they do a, a lot of um, things like that so uh, we, we do a lot together love our lifeguards and, and very grateful for the service uh, let me just say this last thing and then i think chief logan wants to add some i always say i'm a little bit jealous of our lifeguards because um, they get to walk around with shorts and flip flops <laughs> and look all nice and you know and it's like here we are outside with hot pants on and stuff so we like to banter back and forth so shout out to our San Diego uh, lifeguards uh, some of the best in the country for sure. Amazing. Yeah just a, a brief uh, some brief information on lifeguards. Sure. We staff nine stations mm -hmm. full time. On our peak season, we staff up to 31 fire, or mm. not fire stations, lifeguard stations. Wow. Um, they patrol 17 miles of coastline, and they go up to three miles offshore. Oh. So it's a pretty extensive program that we're extremely proud of, and we're, 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 we work well together. And mm -hmm. as, as a firefighter, we go on rescues with them, we, we run calls with them, we work well in conjunction with them. And sometimes, if something happens offshore, let's say like on a, um, we have our cruise ships, We'll fly a rescue medic out to the cruise ship and they'll run the medical aid and bring the patient back and it's all collaborated with fire and lifeguards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's a very intense job as well, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. 100%. Let's see. Courtney, do we have any other questions? I think we have time for two more. We do, yeah. Um, so we see that your application or your department is currently hiring. Yes. Uh, could you guys elaborate a little bit on that? What some of the minimum qualifications are? Kind of how many people you could see making it through? Do you need to be on the FCTC SEL? Things like that. Yeah. So our application is open. It opened January 6th of this year and it's going to close February 6th. <clears throat> the minimum requirement is um, you have to have the legal right to work in the U.S., be 18 or older, have a high school diploma or a GED and an emergency medical technician certification along with a CPR card, which usually goes hand in hand and a valid Class C driver's license. Um, how many do we hope to see? Typically, um, we do, we, we've been doing 20 to 30, I believe. COVID kind of made us adjust our numbers a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, we used to do up to 40, but I, but I think 30, I think is the, what is it? Standard, 36 is our standard. 36 is about, is about it, it varies. So 36 is about standard, and we typically try to do three academies off of each list. Mm. And so um, the goal for this list, we're still working off the last list that we had from 22. So we're establishing a new list right now, and the, the hope is, is to try to get three academies through. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't always happen, but that is the goal. So mm -hmm. um, if things go the way planned, we'll probably do 72 mm -hmm. to 108 people uh, a year. Okay, and we can we can revisit some of these questions um, in a moment sure. too. But I know sure. that your application is currently open. What would, the deadline for that was February sixth. Okay. Yeah, February sixth is going to close. Okay, and where can they find you online to get the application and all sure. of that? Sure. Yeah, the, the easiest way is to go to joinsdfd.org, and you can click on submit an application. You open it up. There's a link right there to the application, and uh, that's the easiest way. You can also find out minimum requirements if somebody wants to know, joinsdfd.org mm -hmm. is, is a good place to get, at the, get that SDFD. information. Join SDFD. <laughs> Make it all simple. You can also follow us on Instagram <laughs> at joinsdfd. Why not you, join SDFD? you know, yeah. There it is. <clears throat> yeah. And we'll be saying that a couple more times throughout the episode yes. as well to make sure that you can find, um, to make sure that you can find these fancy folks, <laughs> uh, and so that you can uh, start the process of becoming 100%. a firefighter at San Diego as well. So Courtney, let's take one more question. Thank you. Um, I'm excited to hear about this one. So we have a question from our live, and they would like to know what sets San Diego Fire Rescue apart from others, and what's the culture like there? Those are two very good questions. <laughs> you want to take one? 
Uh, yeah, I think uh, one thing that I love about San Diego is kind of like what we talked about earlier. There's so many different specialties depending upon what you love, what you like, um, the opportunity to work in a larger city, and who doesn't love living in San Diego? I'm from San Diego yes. County. That's like one, <coughs> one major reason why I also love the department. Um, we have a very inclusive culture, um, especially me, I could say, speaking on behalf of females. I, I, have, I love going to work, I will say that. And so for me, knowing that um, I had a connection with a female prior to getting hired on, speaking with her. I also was fortunate enough to attend the Women's in Conference, um, Women in Fire Conference in Orlando this past year. So getting the opportunity to speak with other women from all over the country and their experiences at other departments, it just made me super fortunate and super happy to be a part of this department, knowing the type of progressive and inclusive culture that we have here. So mm -hmm. definitely uh, a department that I'm super fortunate and thankful to be a part of. Okay, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> there, there, um, did anyone else want to add on to, want to add on to the culture of, of San Diego or anything like that? You know, one of the things that I'm extremely proud about in our department is uh, we're actually a really aggressive department. Uh, what you, what, how so? Oh, so <laughs> what I mean by aggressive is when it comes, you see, I had to adjust my seat. Yeah, you see, I had to adjust. <laughs> Don't go, hold, hold me back, Chief, hold me back. Don't get me started. I, I'll tell you, I, I said this before in an interview, and I'll say it right now with no shame. Mm -hmm. I will put our firefighters up against any firefighters in the entire country, uh, and we will hold our own. Mm -hmm. um, when you get to our department, you're going to do what you actually signed up to do. And, and that's all there is to it. You are going to do what you signed up to do. We run more than 15,000 calls every month in the city of San Diego with 52 fire stations. And about 11 to 1,500 of them, we suit up for fires. It doesn't mean that they're structured fires, but you get the practice suiting up, and you will get fire in San Diego. And we always say it's unfortunate. for It is so unfortunate for the people who homes and vehicles and belongings are on fire. That is not what we're excited about. What we are excited about is the ability to put into practice the teamwork mm -hmm. that Firefighter Morales was talking about to, to affect uh, a rescue or to save someone's property or to save someone's life in the worst time of their entire life. We actually get to do that together as a team. And so it brings us a lot of joy. But you are at, if you don't take anything else away from this interview that we do, uh, besides uh, three bald guys and <laughs> one amazing firefighter Morales that was a professional athlete. If you don't take anything away, when you come to San Diego, you are actually going to get to do what you signed up to do. Yeah. You won't just get to talk about, I'm a firefighter. You will actually get to fight fire, 100%. And just to, just to piggyback along with Captain Chanley saying, mm -hmm. what do you mean by aggressive? Isn't it? We also it's an aggressive interior attack. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to trying to protect body and property. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're allowed to do, we run four people on all our engines, mm -hmm. which allows us when we show up, we're going in. Yeah. You know, as long as it's deemed safe yep. enough to go in. Sure. Other departments don't have that. Mm -hmm. And that's what sets us, you know, some people just run three, some neighboring departments just have three on an engine, they have to wait for other engines to show up. Mm -hmm. So we have our two in, two out concept met. So okay. we're able to do that and they train us to be aggressive firefighters and we learn that from the firefighters that came before us. So that's, that's where so this- So all of the passion is inspiring a lot more questions in the chat. We're gonna <laughs> get to a few of those, I promise. I actually have a question um, because I do hear the three people on a rig at a time. Sure. Can you tell me the four, what, what are the roles that everyone plays? Sure. What does that uh, consist uh, uh, of? You want me to tell them about your role? <laughs> <laughs> so we got four, four on a four on a four on a engine. Okay. Uh, riding shotgun is going to be our captain, leading, making sure we're, we're safe enough as firefighters to go in because they've seen more than we've seen, so they can tell us how long a fire has been going, whether it's safe to go onto a roof, things like that. Mm -hmm. The engineer is the driver. He's responsible for the apparatus, the fire engine, making sure we have water to go in there and fight the fire and be as safe as we can because we as firefighters tend to have a little bit more of the tunnel vision as far as where's fire in there, are we gonna go in and make a rescue and how we're gonna put out this mm -hmm. fire. Mm -hmm. uh, so we all have particular roles. I won't bore you with the details as far as what we, we do as firefighters and the captains, but that's kind of the four spots right. on there. And then when support crews come in, uh, you know, the first captain on scene is able to delegate all those different duties. So the fourth all those person would be an additional firefighter. Mm -hmm. um, if if we, we do, go ahead, Chief. So there's one paramedic on each fire on each fire apparatus, so that's fire engine and fire truck. Mm -hmm. And a lot of one of the major questions I always get <laughs> is 
I call for an ambulance. Why is there a fire engineer or why is there a fire truck here? Mm -hmm. Fire stations are str strategically placed throughout the city and our response times are very stringent. And the ambulance can be coming from the hospital or clear across the other side of the city. So in emergency response, time is everything. Mm. So we get there quickly as fire department or as fire service because we're strategically, strategically placed. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the key to that fourth person. The fourth person is always a paramedic. Every fire apparatus has a paramedic on it. Okay. So everyone's a minimum of an EMT because that's the minimum qualifications to get hired. Mm -hmm. But there's always an additional medic or more than one medic. As people pro progress through the ranks, the captain can also be a medic, but there's always one or more medics on a fire engine. Okay, okay. <coughs> I'm, I'm sorry, people in the com I'm learning too. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, this yeah, is yeah, really good right, information. So yeah. thank you. This this is amazing. Only so thing Courtney we won't tell you is how to start the fire engine. We ain't gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, you got to be on the job to know that one. So we ain't answering that question. Don't you ask that oh, one. Oh man, Courtney, let's let's jump back to you. Do we have any more questions? Of course, yeah, you guys right. are definitely getting people's attention. <laughs> um, so our next question is um, from someone in our chat, and they'd like to know, what do you suggest for someone who's working full time outside of the fire service, and they want to start the application and start getting some experience? What kind of things can they do at this stage? Yeah. Well, and I'll just say, I mean, all of us had that exact same experience. That's very common in the fire service. Mm -hmm. uh, when I go to different colleges and I tell the students, you know, some sometimes students are like, the fire service, I would, you know, I, come see me in five or 10 years, you know what I mean? Yeah, and you're gonna wish you would have listened to me right now, right? Um, so a lot of folks in um, the fire service are doing career changes, either it's military or, or something else, like Firefighter Arbor talked about being business owners, um, having a nightclub and, and having an experience at his nightclub that propelled him, but um, ultimately uh, it's a sacrifice. Um, if you're working, and, and especially if, you're, if you have a family, you, I mean, you, if, if you got, a lot of bills that don't really give you a lot of free time. It is absolutely a sacrifice, um, and even more so nowadays. Uh, when Chief Logan and I were managing full-time career and doing that, you know, over 20 years ago, life was a little bit more manageable, you know, financially than it is now. Mm -hmm. So it is tough um, to be able to do that. So that, how you're gonna do it, is gonna be different for each person. Some people might have a family member they can stay with or whatever. One thing I would say to somebody, mm -hmm. and I don't care what you do for a living, I say this all the time, you will never, you will never put more into getting onto this fire department than the fire department will return you and pay. The return on investment is more than you could ever imagine. So whatever you have to do to become a firefighter, you should do that. But I know that that's a sacrifice. So I say that understanding that my situation is not like everybody else's, but just as an encouragement. So um, that's my two cents. And to add to that, I also teach at Miramar College, so I don't know where this person may be located, mm. but if they call their local community college, mm -hmm. a lot of the colleges, colleges understand these tasks and these challenges. So they have full-time and part-time programs. Mm -hmm. So you can go to school full-time to become an EMT or full-time to get your firefighter one. They have mm -hmm. fire academies at these colleges. Mm -hmm. And um, I teach in a part-time academy at Miramar, and every person in that academy come from work to that location mm -hmm. um, and one thing about following your dreams to become a firefighter <sighs> lots of people have dreams to become a firefighter but your habits have to be in line mm, with that dream so say that again Sir, that was good. Seriously, say that again, sir. And, and what I mean by your habits have to be in line with your dreams and your goals is yeah, when you wake up every day, you should be chipping away at that process. And if you chip away at that process, this is the perfect time to get in the fire service. Mm -hmm. Every fire department Scary. up and down the West Coast is hiring. Mm -hmm. If you make yourself a valuable candidate, you will get hired somewhere. Mm -hmm. Guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Man, and, and, and what I would also add, just don't ever minimize where you are right now and what your skill set is and how that can apply to be an asset as a firefighter. Yes, after you get your EMT, you could go be an ER tech, you could get on one of the ambulances, which are nice little launching pads to get on our fire department. But if you're a bartender, a beef cattle farmer, a dog trainer, 
whatever you're doing, there, that, there are skills that you are acquiring that will add and allow you to be an asset on our department. 100%. Yeah. Period. Beef cow farmer. <laughs> I'm Are these jobs that you have? <laughs> <laughs> this dude's done everything, man. Yeah. I feel like yeah. this. Are you speaking yeah. from personal experience here? Yeah. This hypothetical guy. Yeah. He's a millionaire. He flew him. Oh, yeah, he's man. a professional water walker. He doesn't yeah. No, but it, but it's absolutely excellent because yeah. it really shows, you know, that you don't have to be a professional athlete. No. But if you are, this is something you can come into, as well as some of the other careers that you've had before pursuing a career in yeah. the fire service. So 100%. I, I want to thank you for introducing that into, into the conversation. <laughs> yeah. What were you going to say? No, I just wanted to add to that. Yeah. Um, it's also a huge part is you being proactive. So we're talking mm. about all these different outlets, um, mentors, people that you can reach out to. You might have that goal of achieving that you want to become a firefighter. That's your dream. Yeah. But how proactive and how eager and what actions are you doing right. in order to ensure that you're going to achieve your success and achieve your dream. So I would definitely just encourage the audience, like if it's something that you see, you believe it, you can achieve it, mm. uh, make those decisions. Your life is you know, all about the decisions that you make. So if your goal is to become a firefighter, what decisions are you making every day, mm. like what Chief was talking about, to make sure that you can achieve those goals? Yeah, for so. sure. Yeah. I feel like all of this is, is more like life advice. It, yeah. It's not only relevant to the fire service. So this is the synergy here is, is really incredible. Um, but speaking of unique programs and pathways into the fire service, I know San Diego Fire Rescue has several different pathways, programs for youth, maybe that are not old enough or that are a little older or 18 or above and, and still want to apply. Um, Talk to the audience a little bit about um, what are some of those programs, whether it's a cadet program, women's prep academy, those things, and would you like to kick it off? Yeah, I'd love to first start about our girls empowerment camp. Uh, Amber today has done an amazing job. We have over almost 100 girls every year annually that participate in it. It's completely free. This year we start um, opening up our registration on, hey, yeah, hey, beautiful hey, pictures. Hey. We start, uh, our registration is on March 15th, uh, and this year it's gonna be on a weekend of April 15th to the 16th. Um, it's completely free. You have to be only 14 at the date of registration, um, and you could be as old as 18. Um, and it's a two-day weekend. It's phenomenal. The girls get the opportunity to kind of really come out of their shell, and it gives them the opportunity to um, get hands-on with the equipment, um, start a chainsaw, cut with the chainsaw, throw on our, our turnouts, throw on an SCBA, and really know what that feels like, and climb our aerial ladder that's 105 feet. Just that experience not only you know may plant a seed in those young girls' and boys' lives, because it is open to, to girls and boys, um, but it just gives them that insight, not only to the fire service, but also the military, lifeguard, um, CPR, first aid. It gives them just an introduction to where they, you know, they might actually think about pursuing a career that they might not otherwise have ever thought of. So that's definitely a program that we can um, look into. If you want more information, you can look it up on Instagram at Girls Empowerment Camp. Um, another program that we have, which I'm uh, another huge proponent for, is the Women's Prep Academy. So earlier I talked about my most influential person in the department, uh, Selena Laniel. She runs the program. And she and kind this of. This one is for 14 plus two, or this one's for 18? This one's for adults, yes, sorry. Adults. It's okay. for uh, anyone 18 year, years and older. There's mm -hmm. no prerequisite. You don't have to have your EMT or anything. Um, it's run annually. Currently, we are in um, the second to third week for the uh, Women's Prep Academy. Um, it gives individuals that are wanting more exposure and just, um, you know, to really know what it feels like to be, to have the opportunity to go into the fire service. <coughs> so we have it. Annually, it's six Saturdays, and in order to get into it, you have to go through some pretty physical, rigorous tests. And we have usually about 60 people that apply, and this year we took 19 individuals, um, both men and women, and then last year we had 22 participants. So over six weeks, you have the opportunity to learn through firefighters and captains, and you get to meet chiefs on the job, um, and you get to learn how to do things the San Diego way, how to throw ladders, how to manipulate hose, um, just the exposure to things you might not have ever had the opportunity. So I can speak on behalf of my um, previous experience in being a part of the first um, Women's Prep Academy, unofficial Women's Prep Academy, and it was myself and three other of my academy mates, and we all passed our academy, and it's, I mean, I think in, the, in, the, in past academies, women haven't always had the highest success rate. So I would definitely, you know, I attest 
some of my success for sure, having been able to have the opportunity to go through that Women's Prep Academy. So I definitely you know, want to give that insight to anybody that's interested, that's 18 years or older, that wants to pursue a career in the fire service, come down to San Diego um, next year when we host our Women's Prep Academy and give it a shot. You know, This could be the opportunity where you can realize, you know, this is the career I want, or maybe it isn't, but at least you give yourself that opportunity to make that decision. So yeah. if you, uh, it's so beautiful. That yeah. should have been a commercial. Yeah. That was yeah. stated so beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. She's a professional <laughs> athlete, you know, beautiful hair, nice smile. I mean, come on. I mean, you know. Uh, excellent well, I speaker on uh, behalf of our excellent I mean, representative right she's, here. She's incredible all around. Um, I just wanted to, a couple of sure. other things that, that we have that are really unique and incredible uh, for San Diego. We host our own cadet program mm. for individuals that are 16 to 21. Uh, world class. I mean, just a world class operation. As I was sort of thinking through that right now, the thing that keeps coming to my mind is Captain McNamara, who has been a part of the cadet program since he was a cadet, he is all over the county. Like everybody knows Captain McNamara because he promotes the cadet program so much. I, I swear that's that what sticks in my mind is um, a lot of people know. But uh, they, we have room for up to 250 oh. um, young folks to be a part of our cadet program. You just have to be 16, you have to be 16 and in the 10th grade. Mm -hmm. And there's a grade point average as well, you gotta have a 2.0 okay. to be a part of it. But they offer a lot of support. Um, one of the great things about our cadet program and being such a large department, we can serve each part of the county. And so depending on where the, the, the student lives, um, they'll be assigned to Tip, I mean, for the most part, fire stations in their particular location. So if anyone is looking for more information uh, about that program, they can go to sdfdcadets.com, and then they're also on Instagram. Um, incredible program, though. One of the other things that's really neat and unique to San Diego is our um, affiliation with high schools around the county that um, have uh, fire technology programs associated for the students. Um, Chief Logan and I and several other people are from our department taught at Lincoln High School. Lincoln High School is one of the, um, is the school that Chief Logan uh, grew up next to as a youngster. Um, and so um, getting a chance to teach those students, we got a, uh, one of our newest firefighters that's on the job is from Lincoln's <laughs> fire program, so that's crazy. Uh, we spend a lot of time there, Chad, Chad brings a dog. That was a video that they saw, I think, yeah, they saw the video earlier with, with uh, Corey at Lincoln, at one of the high schools. Then we also have Health Sciences High and Middle College, which is another school. And then there's a Mar Vista with uh, Pascal Pond and Captain Nick Swift, they call him Captain Nick Swift, is at uh, Health Sciences. But that is just an incredible way uh, for students to be introduced mm -hmm. to the fire service. And uh, one of the things that's really unique is that <clears throat> those three schools are all positioned in areas that gives a lot of diversity to that classroom. And so one of the things that we have found out about recruitment, at least in my experience, and I think happens all over, is that number one, it's hard to be something that you can't see. Mm -hmm. So diversity is extremely important when it comes to recruitment. And when we're talking about diversity, it's very interesting and or ironic, maybe even a shame, that when you hear diversity, people automatically think of ethnicity. Mm -hmm. And that is not the only thing that diversity is. There are all kinds of, I mean, just based on where you grew up, makes you, like, if you grew up next to the beach, your worldview is gonna be different than somebody that grew up downtown. I mean, that's diversity. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you are, a, if you are a, a world class, one of the things, a, a volleyball player, mm -hmm. And she's taller than me, so her view of me, <laughs> yeah, she looks down on me. I'm just, we just, let's get that out the way right now. But even like, so, I mean, Chad is a world champion jiu-jitsu wrestler, amongst the many other things. He, always, he also swallows knives and does all kinds of Yeah, he'll put on a show at the end of this, don't worry. <laughs> Give us a second. But the point is, is diversity really is a reflection of your entire life. Mm -hmm. Where you grew up, whether you had a two-parent family, single parent, were you raised by your mother, were you raised by your father? Where'd you go to school? Did you take the city? bus did you have to take the bus home late at night did you work during I mean all of that stuff did you grow up taking care of your brothers and sisters um, all of those things create the way that you view the world and that is what diversity is diversity is whatever you bring to the table and so that's one of the good things about having these high schools and being a department as big as ours that serves in so many different areas so I just wanted to say that that we have a ton of different things to introduce people to our fire department which I will argue with anybody, uh, the world's finest fire department. <laughs> there we go. It looks like you wanted to add something. And if you're a young person not living in San Diego County, you can't attend these programs. 
just seek out your local Explorer Cadet program. Mm -hmm. It's all about getting the experience, the mm -hmm. hands-on experience. Mm -hmm. We hire people from out of state all the time. We're just looking for good, quality, competent Facts. people. Mm -hmm. So as long as you follow that path, no matter where you're at, if we're hiring, apply. <laughs> yeah. we, d we do have one other question, and it yeah. kind of ties into these things. Um, so doing these programs, the Girls ca Empowerment Camp, the Women's Prep Academy, mm -hmm. getting involved in some of the high schools, <clears throat> maybe as a high school you attended a CalJAC Career Expo, and thank you so much for bringing busloads of, of students to, to the expos over the years. Um, what's the benefit to doing these programs? Does it assist you in any way in the interview process? Oh, I can answer that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm a testament. You know, I was a part of the first unofficial women's prep academy. I don't come from an extended amount of experience within the fire service. So having the opportunity to go a couple weekends before my fire academy started to get some reps, you know, throwing a ladder, to start a chainsaw, to start a rescue saw, to know what a BA, a, our breathing apparatus, how to turn it on, how to use it, how to manipulate it, gave me a leg up when it came to actually going through my fire academy. Um, so that's something I can definitely attest to is these programs definitely set you up for success. Um, and then it also, like I, I mentioned previously, it gives you that opportunity to realize, okay, is this something I'm really passionate yeah. about? Yeah. Is it something that I really love? Um, so that's kind yeah. of my little... And it gives you a glimpse into the structure. You mm. know, mm -hmm. Keeping a uniform clean, shining boots, standing in line, running together, working as a team. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the structure is different in the fire department and it gives a glimpse in which I think allows you to have a much better chance of being successful just because it gives you a little glimpse of what firefighter life's going to be like. Okay. Can firefighter I, life's going to be like the, one simple th one quick thing. One of the things that these things do too is it op it it, it, it kind of removes the veil mm -hmm. to inside the fire station. Most people drive by a fire department and the doors are closed. We're so busy. We mean we're just never in a station for the most part. And so when you get behind the door and you actually get to see what happens in there you're like what like th i didn't know you did this and there's something last thing i'll say if you've ever drawn i tell you right now after 23 years i still and you can ask anyone that works with me i go i can't believe we get to do this for a living i'm like are you serious we're gonna ride around on a fire engine and drive down there's something there is just something about the fire engine and looking at it and once you get past the awe you're like ah so that these programs give you a glimpse behind the veil and and that glimpse can and will make all the difference in the world okay thank you yes thank you thank you thank you courtney let's let's hear from you well thank you <clears throat> um so i think our next question there's a few I'm trying to decide which one. Um, uh, can you clarify the requirement of having a CPAT at the time of hire? Yeah. So, so uh, the CPAT is exactly what it says. You have to have a valid CPAT less than a year old at the time of hire. Um, and so um, we recommend that you find out where, if you don't have one, uh, when you begin to get into the process, um, this process does take some time, um, so probably maybe after the application is submitted. Th at the end of the day, you want your you don't want your CPAT to be over a year old, um, but at the at the time of hire. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a it's a timing issue. So if you get it in the beginning of the year, say those folks that are going to do their application now. Probably um, the academy won't be until August mm -hmm. from this particular list. And so if a person does it right around the time applications close or somewhere in between the time that you apply and take the test, mm -hmm. um, you should be okay. But if you're in one of the later academies, you may not be. And so um, it's, um, it just needs to be less than a year old. Mm -hmm. And it's a physical agilities test. If anybody who's listening doesn't know what that mm -hmm. a CPAT actually is, it's just a physical agilities test. Uh, but stay in shape. It's a physical job. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you can go to fctc.com to find out what you CPAT is right can. there. You can go to yes. fctc.org. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> fctconline.org uh, to learn more about the CPAT, which is the Candidate Physical Ability Test. It's a time test. We offer preparation. We offer a practice test yes. uh, so that you can come out um, and learn more about the CPAP before just taking it. There's an orientation. There's a bunch of information. Um, so please make sure you go to fctconline.org to learn more about the CPAP. Um, Courtney, do we have any 
we'll take some more questions please yeah definitely yeah. um could you give us a little info on like a day in the life um what kind of schedule do you work uh you know how does that that stuff go <laughs> holy moly that's I could take him. Well, there, there's no such thing as a day in life because that's the great part about being a firefighter. Every day is going to be different. Mm -hmm. Every call is going to be a different. That's why I love the job so much. Um, but we're a family, so we go get in the morning, usually about 7 a.m., and we relieve the off-going crew. Uh, we have a morning meeting, and then we go shopping, and we exercise, and we run calls all in between. If people ask, you know, what, what happens when the tones go off and you're eating? We get up and go handle business. You know, that's just what we do. It's but it but it's a good question. But yeah, you stop what you're doing and go handle business. It's someone. There's an emergency going on. Um, but we do everything together. You know, whether there's four or eight in a station. Whenever we're going anywhere, we're all going together. And when, most time when it's when the, when the when it's nighttime, we eat dinner and go to bed because we know it might be a long night. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So we, we work and our schedule is 24 hours. So in our department, you start, your time officially starts at 0800, but usually we get there by seven o'clock to give the, you know, an, what we, not really an early relief, but somebody to get time to beat the traffic and, mm -hmm. you know, they got to get home to get their kids off to school, whatever it is. So that's usually the culture. That's one of the things you learn by being in the cadet program and stuff. You learn about what time you should be there and stuff like that. So our shifts are 24 hours. One of the good things is um, the time off that we get. So uh, we work what's called the Kelly schedule. Mm -hmm. So we work, uh, so say for instance, you work Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, days off in between. Then you're off Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You're off six days. And then you come back Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, with a day in between. And then you're off Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So our schedule usually ends up being about 10 days a month. Um, and so, um, and then, Within there, there's other things that you can do to manage your calendar and stuff, and it's just incredible. Um, it's a little bit difficult when it comes to you trying to organize your life. You know, like the typical schedule is, well, I know I'm going to be off Tuesdays, but you don't really know that or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so um, there's opportunities. There's all kinds of little opportunities for you to to try to um, to help out to relieve some of that, but it's incredible. And there are some stations um, that I worked New Year's Eve, and we had 29 calls. And so wow. when Firefighter Arberg talked about going to sleep, you and one of the things about a firefighter is you usually sleep with one eye open. You don't really sleep. You just lay down, depending on where you work at, and you have to get up. And we have about 90 seconds to get to the fire engine from a dead sleep. You don't get time to brush your hair and, you know, brush your teeth, which thank God for <laughs> Chad and Chief yeah, Logan and I don't don't my matter. Hair but dries yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, so those are some of the things. I mean, just, just incredible, just, just incredible. That's some okay. of the things, yeah. Okay. And so, Courtney, let's let's take a few more questions. Thank you, Lasana. Uh, so our next question is, what sets a good candidate apart in the hiring process? That's, a, that's one of the questions I have. That's a very good question. <laughs> I'll take that one. <clears throat> so that's, that's a, it's a com very complex answer. Mm. Um, the best I've, advice I can give for setting yourself apart um, sort of touches on what Captain Shanley said earlier. If you're going to be interviewing for San Diego Fire, seek help from San Diego firefighters. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be interviewing for LA County, seek help from LA County firefighters because our interview process is very different. And if you don't seek help, the odds of passing an interview are very, very tough. Um, fire interviews are very challenging. For example, they may say, tell me about yourself. Well, that's an education, training, experience question. So if you start answering the question by telling them about yourself, that's very difficult to score against the next person. Mm. Hi, I'm Jason. I'm a Virgo. <laughs> <laughs> I like long walks on the beach, and I like to play spades. <laughs> so um, coupled with that interview pre preparation, it's just make yourself as valuable as possible. Mm. You're going to have the minimum requirements, right? But you want to try to grasp as many other things that will make you valuable mm. also. And some things to talk about that's going to set you apart in that interview process. For example, a professional athlete is going to set her apart because she can talk about all the experiences and how they relate to the fire service. Mm -hmm. Just things like that will make you a valuable candidate. Mm -hmm. And extensive career opportunities yeah. and just yeah. experience. Every, every Correct. Matters, mm -hmm. Everything matters. Yeah. 
Incredible. Most people would be surprised how much of their life experience mm. actually has a tie to the fire department. And, and that's what you were saying 100%. earlier. Yeah, and it's difficult to articulate it sometimes with those interviews when you're just talking about yourself, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what I found difficult in, in the firefighter process is you're, you're just giving, you're, you have to articulate all these experiences without necessarily getting feedback like you're giving us right now. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to weave all that in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And more importantly, uh, for the people who don't have a whole host of classes or don't have a lot of time to go grasp a lot of classes, uh, it, it's, it's, it's not only based on your resume. Mm. It's the energy you put out in the room. It's that desire you show to be a San Diego firefighter. Mm -hmm. Talk about your experience of what you have done, even though it may not be a lot. You could still score very high and be picked up as a San Diego firefighter. Is that why you guys have the most hype people <laughs> in, the, yeah. in the fire well, service? Well, think, think about also, if, if, if somebody that's going into this process right, right now, if you are on your way into this process, think about this. If it costs $50,000 to train you, if it costs $50,000 to train each person, you need to sit across that table and tell those folks how you are not going to waste their $50,000. Just think about that. So when you talk about how do I show up? Well, if you wanted somebody to spend $50,000 on you, how would you show up? And that's going to tell those folks at, in that room how much you prepared. Mm -hmm. So if you take it lightly and you treat it like you're going in for a job, because right, this is, working for the city of San Diego is not a job. If you want a job, you can go somewhere and get you a job. This is a career, mm -hmm. right? And so you prepare differently when a lifetime, when you're at the department that you're gonna be in for 30 years and get a pension, the best pension in the state. And you're gonna, when you're gonna, when you're um, applying and competing for something like that, you prepare differently and you got to think about that. And so even if you don't have a firefighter one, you don't have that. There's other things that you have done that, and you need to convince those people on the other side of that table mm -hmm. that your $50,000 is not going to be wasted on me. But the only way you're going to be able to do that is if you ask somebody from San Diego how to do that. Mm -hmm. If you come off the street, you're going to be in trouble. You, so you have to, so knock on the fire station door if you need to. I don't care where you live. Knock on the fire station door and ask somebody in the fire station where you can go. It mm. may not be at that station, but maybe they know a place around the city that's going to help. You need to do that. Mm -hmm. And depending on where you are, too, there's a lot of resources mm -hmm. on FCTC as well. And so, um, yeah, so I just wanted to say that if it costs $50,000 to train you, you better prepare like that. Yeah. And, and can, For, you sure. can you be a member of the family? You know, our, we're gonna, we stay with each other 24 hours a day. You know, that matters. Mm -hmm. You know, be, being kind and nice also and trustworthy. Depend dependable, because our line of work, it's very, Anytime. very dangerous. And I know that I can rely on each one of these individuals. If I'm in danger, if my life's at stake, yes. they're yeah. going to make a sacrifice to 100%. come and save me 100%. as well, uh, vice versa. Yeah. Like, I would take care of them as if, because they are my brothers and I am their sister in fire. 100%. Trust 100%. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And we sometimes use the same, <laughs> same barber. So yeah. we've talked about, you know, the requirements to get hired, yes. what you guys are looking for. I want to reiterate that in just a moment. But first, for the candidates that are already interviewing, they're doing they're taking these steps that you're talking about. They haven't heard back from a department yet. What should they be doing or what can they do in this interim period where you're waiting to hear back, you're not on yet with a department, you haven't been hired? What's a good way to wait? Good way to wait is to stay active. Mm. So if you're waiting for one department to respond, that doesn't mean you should be seeking employment with other departments. Mm. Um, the way we run our system is if you're going to that next academy, you're notified. But if you're on our list and we haven't notified you, does not mean you may not be going to the following academy. So stay active, stay motivated, continue to seek other employment, but stay ready mm -hmm. to interview for us again. Because once you pass your initial interview, we don't give you any feedback. So say there's a pool of 150 people, they'll select whatever group's going to the next academy and they'll be notified. So those remaining people may think, oh, I don't have a shot, I didn't do well. And then three months later, you get a call to go to the academy and you're not ready. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're not physically ready, you're not mentally ready, mm -hmm. and then you go in, you have challenges and you ultimately don't mm -hmm. make it. Mm -hmm. So we definitely don't want that to happen. So if you're in a process, 
stay active in that process until a new process mm. starts. Got it. Yeah, and don't, don't give up. Mm. Most of us don't get in on our first try. And to, to add on to what Chief Logan was saying, we had people in our academy that didn't find out they were <clears throat> going to be in our academy until days before, yeah. not weeks before. Mm -hmm. When we fill in those slots, so you need to be ready to fill in because those slots get filled. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and so can we, can we reiterate what the hiring requirements are? We talked about it. It was a question that came in much earlier in the segment, uh, but just to make sure it's reiterated. So as far as like minimum requirements? Minimum requirements. Sure. What does it take to get hired yeah. by San Diego Fire Rescue? Sure. I mean, the minimum requirements are you have to be 18 or older mm -hmm. with a high school diploma or a GED. You have to have the legal right to work in the U.S. You don't have to be a citizen. You just have to have the legal right to work in the U.S. We have someone on our job that is actually a citizen of Canada with the legal right to work in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and is doing very well on our department. Um, you also have to have an EMT certification with a CPR card and a valid Class C driver's license. Those are the minimum requirements. But remember, mm -hmm. right, if you have the opportunity to do more, your preparation Part of it, part of the preparation is the, we understand if you're 26 years old and you're like, I haven't been working on this for five years, but I've been in the military or I've been an athlete or I've been, we understand that. So you can make those kinds of things relevant. But if you're 26 and, they, and haven't been doing anything, mm -hmm. and taking any classes or doing nothing, it's all of a sudden where you said, hey, I think I'm going to try to be a firefighter and you haven't prepared this time, it's going to be difficult. So take the time mm -hmm. um, to do as much as you can to, um, to prepare yourself. Mm -hmm. $50,000 it takes, if it takes that much to pay, uh, is that worth our investment? And, and this next question, an estimation is, yep. is okay. Um, your hiring process is currently open. February 6th is the deadline to apply. Um, when candidates that may miss this round, when's mm -hmm. the next time you think it may come around for them to apply to San Diego? Well, what I usually tell folks is that we try to open up applications once a year. That's what I usually tell people. Um, they say, well, when? What? So we don't know the exact date. Right. It could change, right? Um, the way that we um, certify our list, certify at a certain time so that it's good for a certain amount of time, right? Mm -hmm. People don't need to be concerned with that. If you don't make it in this round, this is another thing I want to say too. Part of the preparation is if you are in this current process right now that from the test last year, it's, I've had questions already. Should I take this next test? Yes, you should. You should absolutely take the test, and you could be in the next academy, and you don't know it. But if you if you get if you're not on the most current list that we're hiring from, which it's going to expire when this new list gets certified, and if you haven't made it to the academy, you're not going to make it. So you want to make sure that you that you stay current. But fill out a job interest card. Go to our website, joinstfd.org. You can look at the minimum requirements. Submit an application. That tab is open right now. So when you hit the submit an application, you'll see the application, and when the application is closed, the job interest card link is in there, all of that. You can also find on our Instagram, in our bio, the, um, our, our website is on there as well. But fill out a job interest card so when the application is open again, you'll be notified the day that the application is open. And let me just say this last thing, and it, it, seriously, and it's really important because a lot of people are, I ask people all the time, what department is the best department? Right? You may be waiting on one, and that, that's fine, but the best department is the one that gives you a chance. That's the best department. The best department is the one that gives you a shot. So cast your net wide because it, and, and honor the department that gives you the opportunity. So I, I just wanted to say that we are not the only fire department in the country. We, we're the best, but we're not the only one. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, yeah. Let me, did I make my, hello, is this thing on? Did I make myself clear? You, so. you, know, you guys have answered so many questions I yes. didn't get a chance to ask. Um, talking about like what should you do while you're waiting or what should, you know, you're starting a little later in your career, all mm. kinds of things like that. Just your answers have been so incredibly mm. fruitful. And, and that part about the department who, who gives you a shot. You know, and also um, ways to be effective while you're waiting. Continue applying. Don't get stale in the process. Keep looking and, and stay on top of everything. Keep working hard and don't give up on yourself. I think all these things are incredible. Um, are there any final words that you would like to leave the audience with as we close up today? Uh, so incredibly thankful to have each of you here today. Um, but and, and we'll just go on down the line. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'd love to be the first one. Uh, so for me, words of wisdom, 
Um, being a firefighter is the best decision I've made. Mm -hmm. For me, having the opportunity, like I said earlier, to work beside people that when I'm in danger or I need help, they're gonna be there to take care of me and me likewise with them. It's like you have a second family. And not only that aspect, but also the fact that every day you go to work, you have the incredible opportunity to help people on the worst day of their life. For me, I had a, just a quick story, a call a few, a few months ago where there was a woman that was uh, in labor and she had the opportunity to have us come and take her um, and transport her from her apartment to the hospital. Um, and I was right next to her just getting her basic vital signs and she reached out and she grabbed onto me and she was like, stay with me. Like, I want you to be here with me the entire time until, until we go to the hospital. And I normally am an EMT, so I'm not a paramedic. I usually don't necessarily um, transport with the patient in the back of the ambulance. But she, she wanted me to be there with her. And that like touched me so deeply. I asked my captain, he was like, sure, yeah, absolutely. Like, stay with her. Um, so that's an amazing part of our job and something that I, I love. Is that just the service for others and how that makes them feel, but also how that makes us feel. It is an incredible feeling and I'm so thankful um, that I, I have this job that not only do I get to feel like a hero, um, but I get to impact people and make them feel mm. as safe, you know, <clears throat> as, I, as I'd ever want them to feel. Mm. So, yeah. Incredible, and thank you for sharing that. Um, Firefighter Arberg, how about you? She's always so tough to fight. <laughs> <all the time, laughs> <man. laughs> Not fair. Uh, the biggest thing is at least yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, bubble a little bit yeah. with your words. For and she gets stuff off the top shelf for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, though? You really, really There's speak There's bottom to the... shelves is what you're saying. <laughs> you really, really speak to the career changers. There, I can't tell you yeah. how many candidates yeah. we yeah. engage yeah. with on a regular basis who um, are in a certain job or a career, and they want to make a shift. And so whether that's what your words of wisdom speak to or whatever it is, you have such a wealth of, of yeah. knowledge. We want to hear what you have to say I as well. just say, don't give up. You know, sometimes we in our head, we have this narrative that says I'm stuck somewhere. I have to be doing something or I need to keep doing this. It's just not true. That's made up stuff. Mm. So don't give up, you know, pick yourself up when you get rejected. I got rejected multiple times. Uh, we have a neat program called Open Enrollee, which was, I was a part of, where you don't get picked up originally, but they give you a shot. Mm -hmm. And that's what San Diego does. They'll give you a shot to see if you can make it through their academy. Mm -hmm. And to add on what Linda was saying, is there a nothing in this world that will change you more than someone coming up to the fire station afterwards with their family saying I'm here because of you. Yeah. I get well up thinking about it but to be something positive in someone's worst day there's no more powerful thing that's ever happened with me. I had a you know a call several months back and it was one of our own. I didn't know. It was a retired uh, female captain on the job. A, a professional windsurfer. Just a Kick butt athlete, <laughs> tough gal. Good job. Uh, see that? Good job. <laughs> see that? Good job, Chad. I'm so proud of you. But she got hit with her surfboard surfing mm. and they had a rescue. And then, mm. you know, a very, very uh, traumatic, critical patient. And then, but we saved her. Mm. Uh, and it was a joint effort from everybody, from the lifeguards and the fire department. But to have her come up with her family a few weeks later saying, thank you, there, there's nothing nothing more heartwarming than that. You know, it sounds very cliche, but to help somebody on their worst day is the best feeling. That's why I'm gonna, I, and, and I'm done looking for a job. Once you get this job, you know, you, know, you might be wanting to be a doctor with that, with that tuition reimbursement. Uh, yeah, I don't, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm cruising hey, off and I'll, I'll be following, name, I'll be following, I'll be following Corey into the sunset. There it is, <laughs> there it is. Captain yeah. Shanley, how about you? What would you like to leave us with? So, so much, but um, you know, I, when I think of uh, every single shift that I go to work, and I promise you, I pinch myself. It's like, what? I, I mean, the smell. I remember the smell the first day I walked into Station 32 on Briarwood and Paradise Valley Road. Sweat? Is that what you smell? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. It was, it was, it was, a, it was the smell of fire on the breathing apparatus. Mm -hmm. There, there's a smell in the fire station and it's hard to describe mm -hmm. what it is. I don't know how to describe it. But I remember um, my mentor, I had, believe it or not, I had really long hair past my, past my shoulders, right? And, and I came up and I shipped Captain Haynes, he's a legend on our fire department. They got a bench 
in, in memory of him. He's still alive, but to remember his, his legend on our job at, the, at our training facility. But he shook my hand and he said, he's an African-American gentleman, and he said, son, let me, let me tell you something. And I said, yes, sir. And I was 28 years old at the time, 28 years old, married already for three years, going on four years. I was a full grown man with bills and everything. And um, I was going to do a ride along at 32s. And he said, I wouldn't hire you for two reasons. Hmm. And I said, for what, why? He said, number one, your hair is too long and firefighters don't wear their hair like that. And two, your handshake is weak. I know that you're not serious. Hmm. And so what I asked young folks nowadays is, what do you think I did when Captain Haynes told me at 28 years old wow. and I just started a family, what do you think I did? I went home and I shaved my hair off. Ask, ask Kevin Bashevsky. <laughs> ask Kevin Bashevsky what I did. I shaved my hair off because I was told that winners do what they have to do, losers do what they want to do. Mm. And guess what? Every single stitch of clothing, I've been married now 27 years. Babe, I love you. <laughs> been with my wife 29 years. I've been married 27 years. And for the 22 years of my oldest daughter being alive, my youngest daughter 18, every stitch of clothing that they ever wore, every vacation that we went on as a family, the college tuition that I have to pay for right now, my wife's vehicle, my vehicle, my daughter's vehicle, our health insurance, uh, whatever it is, the giving that we do to our church, the blessing that we are to the society, not even including the blessing that we are as, as um, uh, Firefighter Morales talked about serving the community, everything that I've done for my family is because of this career, mm -hmm. because of the decision to do what Captain Haynes said to do, to shave my hair off and shake hands like I mean it. And so I am extremely grateful. I, I, and I promise you, like, I am so grateful that I've been able to do this for 23 years. Um, and I look forward to doing it for some more years. But um, I always tell people, you will never put more into this process than you'll get out of it. The return on investment is insane. And this is the best career choice for somebody that, like me, has ADD, doesn't like doing the same thing over and over again, and doesn't mind being a public servant. So go for it. Oh, thank yeah. you. Chief Logan, yes, we'd love to finish it's, it's with you. It's tough going last. <laughs> <laughs> we always save the best last. I mean, look at go. this guy. Look, he's a look at his boots. They're shining. You can see your face in his boots. But my, my message is going to be a little different. Mm. Um, Fortunately, I'm in charge of the hiring process. Mm -hmm. I'm in charge of the fire academy. And I'm also in charge of health and safety. And this will all make sense in a second. Um, mm -hmm. But the very first thing I want to put out there is, if you want to be a fighter, if you have a passion to be a firefighter, follow your dreams, follow your dream, follow your goals. You can do it. I, I did it from mm -hmm. very humble beginnings mm -hmm. um, with a late start in life going to part-time schooling mm. to get all my certifications, mm. and I did it, and look where I am. But more importantly, um, we talked about all the, the good things about the fire service, but there are some challenges. So what I want everybody out there to do is do your research, because as a firefighter, you will experience and see things that you will have no opportunity to see but as an emergency responder. Mm -hmm. And some of those things uh, provide challenges for people where they get in the career, they get in the fire academy, they get out in the ranks, they go to a couple of bad calls and they figure out after all that hard work, mm -hmm. this isn't for me, mm -hmm. I can't do this. Mm -hmm. Or even worse, we have firefighters that feel this not for them, but they get to a point in their career where they have to seek help. Um, so definitely do your research, make sure this is the career for you. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't negate anything they said. This is yeah. absolutely the best career that I've ever been a part of. And it's done an amazing, um, um, amazing things for me in my life. Mm -hmm. um, but do your research before you commit. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. All right, all right. I'm, I'm taking all this in too. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah, taking we're ready. Yeah, we're ready. We're ready. We're ready for well, I mean, it's, it's good life advice even for me to apply to my career here at the Jack. So I, I, again, I'm, I'm really, really thankful. Um, and I know all of us, there's so much that goes on behind the scenes. There's so many people that have um, a place in making something like this happen. Um, so we definitely want to give a huge shout out um, to the Cal Jack team <laughs> as well. Oh, there's a lot of 
lot of people here. Too. You guys can see, there's people doing everything over here. It's like, whoa. Oh, goodness. Yeah, this so, is a top class operation right here. Oh, yeah. man. Well, thank you for, for real, that. For real. Thank you for yeah. that. So um, as we close out, I do want to thank San Diego Fire Rescue yeah. so much for being here today, for all of the wisdom that they mm. brought forth for each of you. Um, know that this episode, though this is airing live, um, it'll live on our YouTube page. So make sure you come back to Becoming a Firefighter. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Find us on the other social media platforms as well. Um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, mm. TikTok. Um, mm. There they are, right on the screen. So make sure that you find us there. Um, and again, we just want to thank you so much for being here. And with yeah. that, we're going to close out the episode. I saw my boss, Yvonne, do this on an episode once. Um, they did a... Can, can we do oh, yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Can we do a San Diego on three? There we go. So one, two, three, San Diego! <laughs> Thank you for having me. Oh, I got a cord. Are you still I'm, filming? I got a cord. Oh, whoa, I don't know. Are we still filming? <laughs> <laughs>